there are problems all throughout the world and people think that there's only problems in third world countries where they don't have a lot of running water, food, a bed to sleep on, um, parents are dying of AIDS. We have just as many problems in our own country. I work in law enforcement and there's never a day that's not busy. It is crazy the stuff we see out there. My name is Amy Benson. My daughter Melissa, when she was 24 years old, took her own life. Do you want to say anything to her? Happy birthday, Grandma Ann. So how old do you think Grandma is? Um, 25. Does she love 25? She was a good kid. I remember just loving to have her around and hang out with her even as a three-year-old. She just has such personality. and loved to dance. We knew from a very early age that she just loved to perform and always had a smile on her face and it was very sweet and caring. As she got to be a little bit older, you know, she you know, went through all the changes that any other teenager did where she hated mom, she hated everything about her life. You know, but we went through all those struggles just like any other set of parents do. We started to see some changes in her in junior high school. She wasn't hanging around with the same type of people that she would normally hang out with. She was finding the troublemakers. She just genuinely did not feel right in her skin anymore. Her personality started to change a lot and we knew there was something off. I didn't recognize her anymore and it was really scary. She started to associate with some other friends who introduced her to um, crystal meth and she got hooked right away. And it was about that time that she started to cut and I didn't know she was struggling with mental illness until later in life when she got diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So you think it only happens in areas where there's a lot of poverty, but that's not the case. And I know that firsthand because I've worked in both. In my early career, I worked in what we considered awesome town. The suicide rate in the town that I worked in was astronomical. No matter what their socioeconomic background is, their cultural background, how they were raised, um, we thought we did everything we could for Melissa. It doesn't matter. She's still vulnerable. There's a lot of pressure to fit in. There's a lot of pressure to, to have the same clothes that everybody else does, to look the same. They get this um, idea in their head that they're not good enough, that there's something wrong with them. You know, they see the beautiful models on the magazines and on TV, and, and they see the, the sitcoms, that everything ends up well in an hour, and everybody's problems are solved. Well, it doesn't happen that way in real life. So many young girls are hurting, so they're reaching out. They're reaching out and trying to grasp something. Social media is a blessing and it's a curse because now people get validated by the number of followers you have. So it's so fleeting. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in ages 10 through 24. But if you think about it, suicide is usually underreported because families aren't excited to be sharing with their communities that suicide happened in their family. My daughter specifically is, who's 19 now. She struggled all through elementary and junior high, high school. Julie's daughter, Marissa, was going through a struggle. She was in crisis and she was talking about committing suicide. And as she graduated high school, it became such an issue that we, she became clinically depressed. I felt like I was always different from everybody else. When the depression got so bad, it's like happiness is not even tangible anymore. She couldn't even get out of bed and wasn't even taking care of herself anymore to the point where she felt like she didn't want to live anymore. My logical thinking is that I wanted to be in another place and I thought if I left this place I would go to a better place. I wasn't afraid to, you know, uh, take my own life. People think kids are just, they're dramatic and they're not serious, but it's serious. So when Melissa came out of rehab, she started a new life, she ended up finding a boyfriend, taking care of her son, and taking steps to get her life back together. We thought, this is great, she's going back to college, she got her GED, and her boyfriend called me frantic and said, meet me at the hospital. And um, when we got there, I knew it wasn't, I knew that she was gonna be gone. I just had this feeling that it, she wasn't there anymore. We thought maybe she had just taken too many pills and was trying to get attention again at first. Um, but no, she really did it this time. She hung herself in the bathroom after she had a fight with her boyfriend. It's heartbreaking that teenagers are feeling now that there is nothing to live for. When you want to say to them, this is just a season, 
This is a season of when you're hurting. It is absolutely essential that these teenage girls have women mentors in their lives, living as an example to them, lifting them up, guiding them, and helping shape them so that they believe that they are worth investing in their future. My passion was children and kids and teens. We went into high schools and basically said, let's put a program on for girls to create high self-esteem and confidence early on so that we can help direct the decisions that they're going to make down the road. In our investigations and the studies that we actually did, it was very clear that creating confident, educated women who are out there fighting for each other and the things we struggle with every day it needs to start early on. It's trying to get them to understand that they're wonderful and beautiful right now and they don't have to fit into the box. Having somebody alongside her that she could talk to would have been very helpful. Um, somebody who maybe went through some similar situations or somebody that she trusted that she could talk to. When I think about how to heal my patients, most people find themselves, when they're depressed, isolated. And that's one of the major issues. I've been feeling depressed for years. 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 Ever since I was like 16. Wow. Yeah. It's just been that worst file my whole life. I am like in this room, this blank room, okay. and there's no way to get out. That's how I feel. They find themselves alone. They feel like they're the only one who feels this way, and then they continue to isolate. So when I try to pull them back, it's through community. So baby steps is going to be like your biggest friend. No, yeah, I, no, I know. Like baby, no, I'm talking getting up and like smiling. Getting, getting up is a big. Yeah, it's like it's like you I get up. Never... Hallelujah. Imagine someone you love, and you're talking to them. You know, how would you talk to them? Would you talk to them the way you talk to yourself? Absolutely not. Why are they cutting? Why are they mean to each other and bullying? Why are they? Ha why do they have eating disorders? Some of the common problems that girls are facing today um, are the ability to cope with all the outside pressures and stresses that go on in their life. Having a mentor is really important because, like, she's helped me, like, you know, solve some issues that I've had and like give me advice here and there. And like, I deal with things differently now because of her and I don't know, she changed me. A lot of people who in life have accomplished remarkable things, they can point to that, that person, that teacher, that mentor who really helped them figure out how to embrace who they really were and how to go on to live a meaningful life. It's so important to have people like that in your life who can be there, that can set aside time and say, you know what, whatever you're going through, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna be a mentor to you, I'm gonna be a, a friend to you. So if you can just affect one person, if you can plant a seed with one person to let them know that they are special and they mean something to you, you can make a difference. I think we need to come together as a community, as, as a nation, to help these young girls that are in crisis. Actually, Grandma's 60 years old. Uh, yeah. Did you know she was 60? No. What do you think it's like to be 60? Whenever I have her son with me for a weekend, um, we go and take flowers to mommy's grave, and, and he likes to hear stories about his mom, and so I always remind him, you know, what a loving, caring person she was. Hopefully her story will help somebody else, and maybe some mom out there will recognize those same signs and um, help their daughter so that she doesn't end up struggling and hating herself and taking her own life like my Melissa did.